Okay, we're going to have a look at a new unit on the binomial theorem and advanced higher maths. Um, but before we do that, it's just useful to understand a few pieces of terminology that will be used throughout this unit. And I usually like to start this with um, factorials. Okay, I want us to think of a problem. I want us to imagine we've got three letters. A, B, C. And the question is, how many ways can we arrange these three letters? Okay, so we've got A, B, C. We've got A, C, B. Uh, B, A, C. B, C, A. Or C, A, B. And C, B, A. Okay, so to arrange... I've used letters here, but if we just say... To arrange three general objects... There are six possibilities. Um, if we included a fourth object, though, um, to arrange four objects, A, B, C, D, and then we can go A, B, D, C, A, D, B, C, and we could just keep going and keep going and keep going. Eventually we'll find that there are 24 possibilities. Okay, but what we're going to do is we are going to define something. Okay, we are going to define what we're now going to know as a factorial. Okay, and a factorial is a way of a factorial, a factorial, sorry, gives us the number of ways of arranging a number of objects in a line. Okay, and what we do for a factorial is write the number with the exclamation mark. Okay, so n factorial is the number of ways of arranging n objects in a line. Okay, yeah, let's take a wee note of that. And we're going to define a factorial as having the following property. n factorial can be defined as, okay, we'll take that number n, we'll multiply it by the number before it, and then the number before that, and then the number before that, oops, and minus 3. And we're going to keep going and keep going and keep going until we get down to 1. 3 times 2 times 1. So see if we have a look at that example with um, how we wanted to arrange 3 objects. If we wanted to arrange 3 objects, we would write that as 3 factorial. Okay, so to work out 3 factorial, we would just do 3 times 2 times 1. And that gives us our 6 possibilities. So 3 factorial is 6. Uh, the second problem with 4 letters or with 4 objects, well, I've said the answer is 24, but if we have a look, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 4 times 3 gives us 12, times 2 times 1 gives us our 24 possibilities. If we had 5 objects, okay, we would just go 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so that's going to be 20 times 3 is 60, times 2 is 120, times 1 is 120. You will maybe hopefully notice a few things though, and it's going to help us use factorials in quite a helpful way. Um, notice here, see when we worked out 5 factorial? We've got the 5 here, but do you notice that C4 factorial, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, 
5 factorial is just 5 times 4 factorial. Do you see that? Um, so I could rewrite 5 factorial is 5 times 4 factorial. Or if I wanted to, I could write 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. Because you notice here, I could have just written it. 5 times 4 times 3 factorial, 3 factorial being 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so we do, or we can have a better definition of a factorial. A better definition. Okay, so we could write 5 factorial as 5 times 4 factorial. We could write 10 factorial as 10 times 9 factorial. Or we could write it, excuse me, or we could write it as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. Generally, we can write n factorial as n times n minus 1 factorial. Okay, the number times the number before, or the times the factorial of the number before it. And the thing that's kind of um, special about factorials is that they grow really, really fast. They grow faster than exponential functions. Um, so see this here, this exclamation mark. That's kind of to show like how fast that they grow. Um, okay, so we'll have a look at a few examples. Just different ways in how we can um, use factorials to solve problems. Let's do example one. We'll say express 8 factorial in terms of 5 factorial. Okay, so 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But see if I have to write down what 5 factorial is. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 5 factorial is here. Okay. So I've got... Oops. So we've got 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. Okay, we just want to simplify this part here. What's that? 56 times 6? 56 times by 6. 36. Okay, so that's going to become 336 lots of 5 factorial. Okay, let's have a look at example 2. Um, we'll go express 12 factorial. in terms of 11 factorial. Okay, so 12 factorial is 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times blah blah blah, 3, 2, 1. So 12 factorial can just be written as 12 times 11 factorial. And that's us for that one. Okay, we can also use factorial to simplify fractions. So we'll say simplify the following. Okay, let's imagine we had 10 factorial over 8 factorial. Okay, so remember 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. It's a huge number, similar with 8 factorial. You can't just like simplify the 10 and the 8 as normal. But what we could do is we could rewrite 10 factorial in terms of 8 factorial, which is on the denominator. So 10 factorial can be written as 10 times 9 times 8 factorial. That's over 8 factorial, and then we can simplify our 8 factorials, and that's going to give us 10 times 9, which is 90. Uh, part B, 5 factorial over 6 factorial. Remember, 6 factorial means 
If I have six objects, that's the number of possibilities there are to arrange them in a line. So you'll notice that the bigger term here is on the denominator, so we're going to have to rewrite the denominator and able to simplify it with the numerator. Okay, so we've got 5 factorial and then we're going to write 6 as 6 times 5 factorial. That will leave us with 1 and 1. That's going to become 1 6. Let's do part C. 7 factorial over 5 factorial, 4 factorial. Okay, so you notice how the biggest factorial is on the, the numerator, so we're going to rewrite it. Uh, there's a few options here as how you want to do this, but I'm going to want to try and simplify it with the 5 factorial. So that's going to become 7 times 6 times 5 factorial, and that's over 5 factorial, 4 factorial. My 5 factorials can simplify. I'm going to be left with 7 times 6, well that's 42, over 4 factorial. Um, remember 4 factorial, we'll just do it aside, 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 4 factorial is 24. So that's going to come 42 over 24 which is 21 over 12. Um, we'll do one final example just on how to work with these factorials just numerically. Okay, let's simplify 4 factorial, 5 factorial over 7 factorial, 2 factorial. There's a few different ways you can think about this. Generally, when you've got like multiple terms, you can kind of almost pair them up. You can think, okay, this can pair with this, and this can pair with this. You don't have to do it this way, um, but in terms of ease. So if we look at the part that we've highlighted in yellow, we'll notice that the biggest term is on the denominator. So let's rewrite the denominator. So we can write that as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. And with the blue part, so we're multiplying the biggest term is on the numerator, so we need to rewrite that. So that's going to become 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial over 2 factorial. Okay, we can simplify here. We can simplify this 4 factorial with this 4 factorial, this 2 factorial with this 2 factorial. If you wanted to here, Try and make this really small. If you wanted to here, you could multiply this 3 with this 6, um, but I'm just going to write that out fully. So we've got 5 times 4, which is 20 times 3, which is 60. 7 times 6 times 5, well, 6 times 5 is 30, times that by 7 is 210. Okay, 30 goes into that 2 times, and 30 goes into that 7 times. Okay, so there's just a wee kind of introduction about how we can work with this factorial notation in order to simplify some expressions. This is just generally the starting point of working with the binomial theorem.